<laughs> Aloha. Welcome, everybody, to the Aloha Friday Marketing Jam Session. I'm Tom Gaddis. I've got my business partner and the man that all the women on Maui say rocks the skinny jeans, Nick Ponty. What's up, Nick? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was saving it. Appreciate you putting me on blast like that. I don't know if you call these skinny jeans, but I'll take it. <laughs> uh, man, we're excited you guys are here. We have a really awesome show for you guys today. Uh, lots of good content. We're going to take questions. We're going to give away some cash app money. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to queue up the intro and we'll see you in a few seconds. Are you ready for the fastest 60 minutes of local marketing strategy, tactics, tips, and fun on planet Earth? It's now time. The moment you've been waiting for. After 167 agonizing hours, they've returned. Broadcasting live from their island retreats, smack dab in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And now back for a brand new Sharks Live show. It's your hosts, the Offline Sharks, Tom Gatt and Nick Ponte. Oops, I let that play a little longer than normal. Skinny <laughs> jeans, man. Skinny jeans. I'm like, well, are these skinny jeans? She's like, no, they're athletic. <laughs> no, they're athletic. <laughs> what does that mean? There is no ankle cleavage on these jeans. Zero. I would never do that. That is so not me. If anything... I think as these a, are baggy. <laughs> as a 47-year-old father of two, I have no idea what skinny skinny jeans are, nor do I want a pair. <laughs> I just thought it sounded funny. <laughs> good good way to get somebody on the defensive. <laughs> skinny jeans? What are you talking about? Oh, man. Welcome, everybody. Aloha, Dorn. Yeah. Ah, thanks, Jacqueline. Aloha, Doug, Suzette, Matthew, Stan, Gabriel. Welcome, everybody. Facebook user. Not really sure who that is, but welcome. Hey, Facebook user. <laughs> yeah. We are excited you're here. It's another Aloha Friday Marketing Jan session. Uh, we got a lot of good stuff to do. I think today we're going to keep it kind of casual today. So today, Nick and I were discussing before we jumped on here, we're going to do some shark shout outs because we, we always got to share the love, right? Celebrate the people that are taking action, kicking butt in the group. Uh, we're going to talk about the book of the week, and then we're probably just going to go off of that and then uh, take some questions and just talk to you guys about whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, the book of the week is a really good... First of all, the book of the week is a really good book that we can talk about for, I mean, on multiple levels for a long yeah. time. And and yep. hits, hits close to home, very close to home for both Tom and I, so... We're going to do that. But we're also going to give away some cash app money too. So, Oh, course, yeah. We uh, always like to give away the money. Do that. Actually, you guys, put a, put, a, put a money sign in the chat if you guys want to win some cash app money today. <laughs> uh, this is great. Dorn. Dorn. No. <laughs> I don't think I could. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I could do it, man. I don't have enough hair for that. Look at this. Look at these white walls. Look at these white walls. <laughs> yeah. David said, of course, when have we ever been formal? That's a good point. That's a good point, David. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a good point. We do try to have fun on these shows, right? I mean, what's the point of doing all this hard work and all that stuff if you can't have a little bit of fun? Truth. Right? Sometimes we have yeah. to like remind ourselves to stop working so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should sometimes Nick text me. He's like, dude, let's go play golf. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then we're like, no, we got stuff to do. We can't do it. Yeah. And we don't go. <laughs> yeah. We do that too. We do that too. We, we probably do that more than we actually go play golf. Yes, we do. I was just thinking the other day we should go golf soon. Be nice. We'll be nice. Yeah. And just so you guys know, Tom and I aren't, we're not like, I mean, no offense to anybody that is good and crushes it at golf. We are not, we're not those kind of golf guys. We don't have, no. we don't have all the, uh, the cool stuff. Um, My handicap in fact, is... I seen Tom golfing some slippers last time we went golfing. If you know what slippers are, uh, what do they call them? Flip-flops on the mainland. They're golf flip-flops, though. 
golf. They're flip. like made. They're made to golf in. Like the bottoms. Like they're. That's what they're made for. They're awesome. Man, if Happy Gilmore saw you wearing those things around the golf course, he would beat the living crap out of you. <laughs> yeah. And just so you guys know, I always win. I always have the highest score. Every so time. I always, always, always win. Every time. I'm and I'm that- stoked if I keep a ball the entire game, which I've, <laughs> yeah. I've been doing. One ball the entire game I've been doing for a while now. Pretty proud of that. Yeah. Not that we're competitive or anything when we golf or anything. We don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it's all. <laughs> like, I remember I used to have these friends, and they were like, "Yeah, we started this little video game tournament, tournament, but it's really a relaxed thing." And then one of the guys was like, "A relaxed thing? We have a trophy, bro! Like they made a trophy." <laughs> they were like so crazy. Oh, awesome! Uh, somebody said, "What's the handicaps?" My handicap is my swing. <laughs> That's my handicap. What's yours, Nick? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I. I mean, I. I I definitely shoot over par. <laughs> <laughs> like David says, I'm still at the level of miniature golf. <laughs> That's great. Yes, Matthew, uh, here in Hawaii, it's slippers. Well, actually, it's slippers. Slippers. It's like you got you got to have on your slippers before you go out. Yeah, and you got to take them off before you come in the house. <laughs> yep. Yes, you definitely do. Awesome. Well, listen, let's uh, let's get started. Let's get I want to get into talking about the book and how, where that takes us and the questions that you guys have. So let's start off with our shark shout outs, because we have a lot this week, which is I mean, we always have a lot, but more than last week, which is really great to see. Let me uh, fire up my screen share here. And the way we do the shout outs these days is if you go into the Offline Sharks Facebook group, you're going to find this post. It's got the list of all the shout outs we're going to go over today. So what we would like you guys to do is to leave a comment, a congratulations, a way to go, a support for your fellow sharks there. And then we do a couple of things with that. One, during this stream, we're going to give away some cash app money to random people that comment on that shark shout outs post. And uh, I'm sure we'll find some other way to uh, give out cash app money as well. But uh, this is the first start. So let's start out with our first shark shout out, which goes to Scott Meisner. And uh, Scott, so you guys know, he's actually one of our recommended designers in the uh, CCSU course. And the mailer that uh, we just did uh, that's going out right now, Scott is the one who did all the design on that. And I think, did we show that? I don't, can't remember if we showed that on this call. What call we were on when we showed that. But anyway, uh, it looks really great. He's an awesome guy. I got to meet him. Scott has like 10 kids. And uh, so every year, him and his wife, they come to Maui to get away. And uh, they haven't been because of everything that's been going on. But the last time he was here, I got to have lunch with him. Super nice guy. Really liked him. But Scott sold uh, just under $15,000 in ads in one week. So $14,925 in ads just this past week. I mean, that's amazing. He's almost filled one nine by 12 mailer and working on filling up a second. Man. Yeah, that's awesome. So so talk about somebody who's really like scaling the nine by 12, because we, we always talk about using the nine by 12 as a great entry, entry level entry point to get in, to get into getting some clients and starting your business because you know, you instantly have a bunch of clients, you have relationships, you can sell other things to those people and you make a little money in the process. But look at what Scott's doing. He's scaled that business model to something that is consistent, right? He's consistent. How many does he put out each year, Tom? Well, last year in 2020, so keep in mind, that's with the pandemic going on. In 2020, he did 18, 18 mailers. 18 mailers. 18 so, mailers. Year. Yeah. During the pandemic. For During anyone the who said, oh, that's crazy. I want to do that because of the pandemic. <laughs> like, I mean, that's it's not crazy. It's very impressive, is really what it is. So yeah. think about this, everybody. Scott, anytime he wants to go do another mailer or he needs to generate some cash flow, think about how many customers he already has has a relationship with that he can go back to and be like, hey, you know, what's going on? Or this is something new that I'm doing, or I'm putting out a different type of direct mail, or we're running a special offer. It allows him to be able to keep the cash flow coming in. Yeah, and he does all of the prospecting through direct messaging on social media and email. Very little in person. I mean, now he's built up such a 
you know, he has such a client base that he's just, you know, reaching out to all the people that have been on mailers before is filling up a lot that way. And then direct messaging new potential clients and stuff like that. So yeah, it's really, really awesome to see that. And that's one of the great things about CCSU, right? Is you can, that business can be whatever you want it to be. It can be something that you just do once to generate some cash, right? Like you have no desire to do it again, but you just, you put in the effort and the work, you do it one time, you generate a few grand just to get some quick cash. It's something that you can do on a more regular basis. Uh, you know, like Nick said, we do it not on a regular basis, right? Like pretty much like once a quarter just to kind of keep traction going and stuff like that. Uh, or you can scale it up to something where you're, you know, you're doing 18 in a year. So it's really like, it, it's super uh, flexible for your needs and your, you know, your goals and what you're trying to do. So really, hey, so awesome. I want to I put a little feeler out there to everybody that's with us right now, just because, you know, I know you and I have, you know, we've been meeting here at the office and talking about some of the strategies that we've been working on behind the scenes. So I want to ask everybody that's here with us, you know, what are your, what are your guys thoughts on a way to scale? Like, like Tom said, right. We're, we're, we do the, the mailer about once a quarter, sometimes a little longer in between, like maybe one a year sometimes. And it's because we have a lot of stuff going on, but we like to do it to keep it fresh. We like to keep our, our people that are on the mailers, like they love it. Right. So we, we do it to help them as well. But you know, really we've gotten so busy with so many other things. We've, we've had to kind of figure out a way to scale that without us. And so for the last month, almost two months now, we've been really working hard behind the scenes, figuring out how to scale that really without us. And, you know, I really, I mean, we've, we've really nailed it, Tom, I think, you know, with how we're doing that. And I'm curious to know how many people here would be interested in learning how to scale that business or, I mean, <clears throat> it doesn't really have to be the nine by 12, because I think with what we're doing, Tom, without giving too much information away, you know, it really, you can scale it's, it's your prospecting and your sales is really what it is. If you, if you follow what we're, what we're doing and working on, but, you know, just curious as to, you know, if that's like an issue that people see within their business, the disconnect of, of prospecting and getting more inbound clients. And I see, I see a lot of people saying me, count me in. And, and actually one thing, Tom, is, you know, anybody that's, who's, who here is in the Shark Alliance? Maybe you guys could give me a alliance, like a hashtag alliance or something in the, in the comments. Because, you know, as you Shark Alliance members, you guys know that, you know, one of the things that you get as being a Shark Alliance member is you get complimentary access to our new trainings that Tom and I create. So we've been really working behind the scenes on something. I'm not going to give you all the details right now because it's not done. But you Alliance members are going to get that information really soon here. Um, and I see a ton of Alliance people in here. So represent, <laughs> represent. So, uh, yeah, you guys, um, Alliance squad, you know, everybody that's interested in what I'm talking about, keep your eyes peeled on that. I'm excited to share it with you and uh, everybody else. It'll take a little bit longer. Excited to share it with you as well. But um, it's good to know. And I think we came up with the idea based off of kind of polling the audience. I don't know if you guys saw that survey a little while ago that we did, but it really helped us to figure out where the disconnect was for a lot of people. Yeah. And what we can do to help, right? And what so, we can do to help. Yeah. Sorry, I kind of hijacked that. I just thought it was a great moment because of what Scott is doing there and because of what we're doing and, you know, what we're, what we're doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it is, it is, it is really connected. And I want to answer a couple quick questions I see here before we move on to the next shark shout out. So Brad said, uh, I'm still a little confused about who creates the ad and the design. So Brad, you hire a designer to do that. So we do none of that. Like the only thing we do is actually sell the spots. Everything else is completely outsourced. And because we collect all the money first, like we don't have to spend any money out of our own pocket to do any of the fulfillment. So we go and sell the spots, collect the money, then we pay our designer, then we send the card to print, and then we pay for the postage. So we spend none of our own money uh, when we do that. And we do the only part of the process that we do is the actual selling of the ad spots, the designer and the printer do everything else. And so Scott 
actually does his own design for his cards, but he also does add designs for other people that do nine by twelves. And there's another uh, shark member, Carl Gabrowski. He does add design as well. We have them both in our course as recommended designers in CCSU. So they work with other sharks to put their ad cards together and all that stuff. So yeah, Scott did all the ad design. And then we roughly make around three to four grand per mailer, right? So that's our profit. That's our profit. So it generates around 7,000 in revenue. But once you uh, once you collect that money and then you pay for the design, the printing and the postage, you're going to keep around somewhere between three and four, depending on what you charge for the ad spaces and and all that all that kind of stuff. So uh, but that Tom, should, yeah. But, but actually, actually that's just it. That's <clears throat> so we just, we just did one, right? We just did a mailer. It's, it's being handed out by the post office right now. Right. Is that where yep. we're at? Next yeah. week. Yeah. Next week. Okay. So it's, it's on the way. It takes a little longer to ship all those boxes to Hawaii, but it's on the way. But actually, I don't mean this to sound weird, but Tom, actually, we didn't even do any of that. We didn't even do the sales. We didn't. <laughs> so, we did not. so that's what I'm talking about here. Like before we used to do that, we used to do the sales. We used to do the prospecting, but actually this time all we did was point in the right direction and the card got filled. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what I'm excited yeah. to share with you guys. Yeah. And uh, somebody asks, uh, so one monthly, so Scott does multiple areas, Eric. So just so you know, Scott does multiple areas. So awesome. Well, let's, let's talk about some of these other shout outs. Cause I want to give the other people uh, time as well. So we've got Safira. Safira closed four new website clients and a new SEO client. She closed another SEO client from posting in Facebook groups, a strategy that we've been talking about. And a lot of sharks have been talking about. So Safira way to go. That was, that's awesome. Uh, congratulations. I mean, that's, that's fantastic, man. Four uh, website clients that that's huge. Yeah. Well, you know, and what's interesting when you're, when we, when you guys see what we're doing here with kind of removing ourselves from the prospecting part and stuff like that, like these type coming across clients that need this type of stuff that need websites that need SEO help and everything like that is very super, super common. So it, it yeah, very super common. Um, Jocelyn wing back on the shark shout outs list. She closed, listen to this, a 10 K website dev project. It is awesome to watch Jocelyn doing that. And, uh, her first five figure website project. That's huge. I remember my first $10,000 website. That was like a huge milestone, a huge milestone. And I had put out so many, so many proposals and met with so many people and and never got anybody to accept it <laughs> and you know <laughs> higher than 10,000 like it was always like a feather in the cap that I always wanted to hit some sort of you know hit the $10,000 website and man I've I've submitted lots of you know 15 14 12,000 proposals that got I got ghosted on so congrats Jocelyn Jocelyn said uh if we have a mastermind in Maui when everything you know pops back off she'd be she'd be down to come Oh, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Uh, Terrence, Terrence, he's our next shout out. He sold his first VIP package for just over $1,200. It's a one year membership to his agency growth machine site. 1200 bucks for a year listing on his AGM site. That's awesome, Terrence. Damn. Man, that's Damn. great. Uh, so 100, that's, bucks a month. 100 bucks a month for a listing on his site. Yeah. I mean, that's fantastic. Uh, Jandy, I'm uh, excited to see Jandy on here because Jandy was just in our private coaching class. And I don't know if you know this too, Nick, but Jandy messaged me her. I think it was her nephew is one of the actors in that Aloha movie that just came out that everybody's been talking about. Oh yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. I yeah, haven't so seen it, but I know nephew. which one you're talking about. Yeah. So she has some Hawaii ties, but Jandy closed a new website deal, $1,600 payment so far that she's received on the project. Plus, per her post, Nick and Tom's private coaching has paid off and she now feels legit. It's always awesome to watch Jandy make progress in the um, in the course, you know, like getting stuff done and all that stuff. So way to go, Jandy. Super proud of you. And uh, her fellow coaching student member there, Jacqueline, our friend from across the pond, 
Uh, she was getting 60 pounds for two hours of consulting. Awesome to see somebody selling consulting, right? And she got 730 pounds for setting up the social media profiles and Amazon account and writing the content for the client's website. So she got paid for the consulting and then paid to do the fulfillment. Awesome. You know, I was, so I, I spoke with uh, Jacqueline yesterday for uh, probably close to an hour. And she was telling me that, you know, she has, she's close to the point where she has too many clients to deal with. Like she needs some help. And I mean, that's always a, that's always a good feeling for, for yeah. me to hear. I know for Tom to hear too, especially, you know, we've been, we've been working pretty closely with Jacqueline for a while now. And, and we've all, everybody in the group, because she, you know, she goes to the Facebook group and she shares about what she's doing, uh, new clients, questions. So we kind of know what she's been, you know, her, her, her journey. Right. So it just makes it that much um, more significant when you, when you see these, these members, these sharks of our community go through these different stages and milestones and levels, right. And levels and, and break through different plateaus. So, you know, Jandy, Jacqueline, all the shout outs, I mean, amazing stuff, amazing stuff, but both ja uh, Jandy and Jacqueline, we've been, uh, you know, working with a little more closely the last month or so and and uh yeah just awesome to see yeah really really great and our final shout out for today goes to maurice maurice, maurice another website project so to all the people on the shout out list a big round of applause congratulations awesome to see that and you know i hope if you're tuning into this show on a regular or semi-regular basis one thing that you notice about our shark shout outs is one there's a huge uh collection of people that are all different, right? Dif you know, very, very diverse, I guess I should say. And also the services and the things they're closing deals on are diverse. So it's not so much about finding the exact right service. It's just finding something that you like to do and then actually doing it, right? Nick and I always say the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, right? You always look at uh, what other people are doing and you think, oh man, I want to do that, but maybe that's not the best fit for you, right? So just pick something and keep working at it until you, uh, you know, have some success with it. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I think what, you know, what you're saying there, Tom, and is, is so true is like we have people from all walks of the life, you know, whether you're, you know, we've had, you know, 16 year olds on our shout out list. You know, we've had yeah. people with um, no background whatsoever that are leaving different industries, getting to this for the first time or people that you know, have, have had an agency agency for a little while, but done absolutely everything by themselves. Like look at, uh, like Barbara, right. Barbara who, uh, you know, had, has a successful agency before running into us, but you know, did everything herself, her and her husband, and was just totally maxed out, stressed out and didn't know how to, how to scale it. Right. And so, I mean, all walks of life, all stages of business, new, beginner experienced advanced and you know it is it is awesome to see the community just kind of coming together and everybody yeah. having their own levels of success yeah well and people from all over the world and all different parts of the country having you know like having success that gets me fired up to be like no matter where you're at no matter what your situation uh you know if you put in the effort and the work like you can do it like we really believe that like we really believe that. So I think, I think we've did like a, we did a, um, we pulled some, some data out of our Facebook group. Surprise, surprise. Facebook has <laughs> data as to where everybody's located. Um, mm -hmm. but we have like sharks in like 13 or 14 different countries or something or 13 different countries, right? Something like that. Yeah. They're everywhere. We're all Crazy. over the place. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Well, why don't we, uh, we, we need to give away some cash out money. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. Money, money, money. <laughs> dollar, dollar. Dollar, dollar. dollar. <laughs> cha -ching, cha -ching, bling, bling, cha -cha you ain't talking money, then you're talking no matter. I love that song. Okay, you guys. So what we are going to do is uh you know we do cash app giveaways on every show we just give away some cash app money so if this is your first time joining us you'll want to show up at the beginning of the show we like to do it in the beginning in the middle at the end 
multiple times, usually multiple times. So you want to be here for, for that and uh, not Kevin. And also on all of our trainings, right? Our webinars, our lives, all the stuff we do. We always like to hook everybody up. So this first one, everybody, Tom, could you pull back up that shout out list? If, uh, you guys, yes. if you guys could go, here's how you can enter to win this cash app giveaway. And I think we gave away like two or three last week just for, for this vehicle on how to win this cash app money. So go to that post in the Facebook group. And go ahead and like that post and congratulate the the uh, shout out people in your community this week because they've been helping everybody out. They've been taking action in their business. They've been winning. They've been, you know, asking for help and helping other people. We like to, you know, give them a little something, make them feel a little more special. So go to that post, like it, drop an engagement, let them know in the comments that, um, you know, you're congratulating them and what we'll do is we will pull somebody uh, or a couple of people actually at random and give out that money towards the end of the call here. So if you don't comment and like that post, we're not going to be able to see you as wanting to be eligible to win some of that money. So go do that now. And then uh, we'll be giving out some more of that cash app money at the uh, end of the call. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. So uh, let's talk about our book of the week. So every week, we do a What's Tom's Reading. You can find all the books we recommend at offlinesharks.com forward slash books. And uh, today we're going to do talk about something a little different. It's not a business book per se, um, but it, it's a book that I read a while ago. And it's one that I keep right behind me. You might be able to see the empty spot where I pulled it out from. I keep it in e easy reach for reference. And it's a book that I constantly go back and look at and uh, read stuff up on. And I think it's the reason I wanted to talk about it this week on the live show was because <laughs> what's, and it's not Dr. Seuss. It's not. Somebody Dr. Said it. Yeah. I know, was great. The, um, don't get us started. Don't get us started. Facebook user. Yeah. I have all the kids book, the kids business books over there. They're all sitting over there. Anyway. Um, Oh, the places you'll go. That's a great one by Dr. Seuss for business. Anyway, so the, uh, as you guys know, or you may not know, uh, I did not go to college. Nick did not go to college, right? And I think something that a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, don't go to college. You often see them talking about that almost like a badge of honor, right? Like I didn't go to college, but I built this amazing business. But but just because um, they did not go to college doesn't mean um, that they are not educated. And I mean, educated in like the liberal art sense, because when you start to hang around a more affluent uh, type of person, like customers you're dealing with, business builders, high achievers, people in groups you may belong to, a lot of people in those groups are very well educated and they're extremely smart. And so they talk about... Um, I don't know the best way to say this, but they talk about educated subjects like uh, art, music. Um, they have a uh, usually an understanding or something that they enjoy doing there, right? So I think it's important as marketers that we have an understanding of that stuff too, or, or at least some uh, a place where we can go to find out about those things so that we can uh, fit into those social settings, right? And And know where those people are coming from Plus, it'll give you ideas. Like a lot of times you find things to, to talk about, to write about, things you can relate to, all that sort of stuff. And so the book this week is, uh, gosh, I got this so long ago, but it's called An Incomplete Education. All right. I got one of those. Yep. It's from Quark to Quattrocento, Basel to Bosnia, the Dreyfus Affair to the Doppler Effect. Mary Magdalene to Laurie Anderson, Teapot Dome to the Magic Mountain, Metaphysics to Microeconomics, Lao Tse to Levi Strauss, Napoleon to NAFTA, plus How to Tell the Iliad from the Odyssey. So it's just like, this book is really great because there's like all these things that explain in a, like a summary and a really easy to read way, a lot of stuff that you would hear um, smart people, I don't know how else to say it, smart people talk about, right? So like if I'm ever wondering like, well, what's the big deal with classical music? Uh, I'll go to this chapter and here on classical music and I can read up on who the big composers are, what the pieces are that people consider to be the best. Sometimes I'll pull them up on YouTube and listen to them. Like, what's the big deal with this? And it kind of explains all that stuff. I find it super, super interesting. 
Um, I love books like this. So I have a couple of different ones and there's a lot of other um, books like this, right? But it's not so much that you get this one exactly, but I think you should have some of these books around you, right? Like other ones that I, I like, I'm big into philosophy. So I love getting like, uh, you'll see them at the bookstore. They'll have like a uh, Plato for beginners and it's almost like a comic book, right? But it explains it all. So I get a lot of those types of books that just help me get kind of a basic understanding of a subject. Um, and they're not dry to read, right? So that's our book of the week, an incomplete education. Really, really good one. Yeah, that's, that's such a good topic because <clears throat> if I look at my journey and, and your journey, <laughs> or I, I at least feel like I, I absolutely had an, an incomplete education. You know, H Hawaii is kind of a, a special place where, I mean, we're just this little island in the middle of the Pacific, right? So being from here, born and raised, like you have what they call island mentality, you know? And I know for myself, like the first time I left here and went to, like I went to New York City when I was like, I don't know, 13 or something with my mom to go see the Statue of Liberty. And that was like the one thing I did in my, my, the one traveling thing that I did in, you know, my childhood with my mom. And I don't know how that even happened. It was just a miracle, but it was like this massive world, like outside of island life, which is so, so, so different, you know? And, and I, I remember being in, you know, young, being a young adult, in different circles kind of struggling to keep up and talk about different things, right? It felt a little overwhelming. And I think for me, the, the one thing that, that helped me get a little more well-rounded, I guess is what we're talking about is like, I, I got a mentor and I kind of lucked into a mentor. Really. It was a mentor who, uh, he was from Europe. He was my neighbor and you know, he, we became friends first. We were just friends. He's my neighbor, but we, we ended up becoming friends and, uh, you know, we'd hang out, we'd go to the movies, we'd go eat lunch and stuff. And I was a kid and he, you know, we just, he was my buddy. And, um, he started, we started, we started talking about stuff, you know, different art, different, you know, eras of, of history and, and culture and stuff like that, which really interested me. And, um, I feel so lucky that I got to like learn that stuff from him. But, um, at the end of the day, like, internet and the internet, the age of the internet and digital, like we all kind of have that opportunity. You know, we all have that opportunity because I mean, we have Google, right? We have YouTube, we have, we have tons of books that we can buy and read from Amazon instantly, you know, from Kindle to paperbacks to, to whatever. And it really, it feels like, feels kind of like, uh, I heard somebody say this the other day, you feel kind of like Robin hood in terms of, you know, how Robin hood, like steals, steals from the rich and give to the poor. Right. But like, I kind of feel like that with, with like knowledge and education with like, there's so many people out there, mentors, um, people on clubhouse that are smart. Don't spend any of your time on clubhouse. It's a total waste of time, <laughs> but you can <laughs> rob them of their knowledge and bring it back to your life. You know, for me, I felt like that, right? Like, I felt like I was always, and I still am stealing this information and giving it to me who could totally use it more and in, in, in better uh, ways than them. And every single day you're constantly doing that, just going through that journey of that, you know, self-education. And we have so much access now, which total, I mean, who would have thought, who would have thought that we'd be at where we're at today doing this stuff? Yeah. Well, you know, and I have a similar story. I, because of my magic ties, I met somebody who was a magician, but was also, uh, very, very, uh, intelligent and author, what you, what you would consider a renaissance, like you ever hear like a citizen of the world or a renaissance, like he's a real renaissance man, like a lot of knowledge about a different, a lot of different topics and how that applies to business and things like that. He's actually the one who told me about the incomplete education was like, you should get this book. And, um, <laughs> I thought you were going to say, he told me about clubhouse. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Uh, he's 80. He just turned 84 this past Monday. But you know, what's interesting about that is we're talking about becoming a well-rounded person. Right. And a lot of, you know, I know like Eugene Schwartz, the guy who wrote Breakthrough Advertising, people called him a renaissance man, uh, that type of person who had knowledge of a lot of stuff. He was a big art collector, right? Things like that. Like um, just things to, to enrich himself. We talked about that last week, I think, right? Like living an enriching life, like not necessarily about the money, but just having an enriching life. 
And when we talk about books like this, like An Incomplete Education or another one I have is called Catching Up by Charles Vele or these other, you know, any of these other type books like that, like Tom Matson, I saw he's on the call. He said he reads Plato for beginners, the Canadians, you know, beginners. a different, different type of library. I guess <laughs> it's good to see you, Tom. Hey, Tom. And, uh, yeah, but like when we talk about those things, we're talking about two things. One, developing that trait that really great entrepreneurs have, which is always be curious, right? Always being curious. And then also just becoming a well-rounded person and having a well-rounded enriching life that's not just about the money you make or those types of things. And, uh, you know, that curiosity, that carries over into your business, right? Because then you start asking questions like, why did this happen? Why did people do this? Why is this going this way? And um, yeah, so I think it's just uh, really good to make some time in your bit. It's really easy to get, you know, so wrapped up in learning all the latest business stuff and staying on top of that and the business hacks that we don't really make time to, one, appreciate what we already have and enjoy it. And then two, to just better ourselves as human beings, not necessarily just as business people, but just as a better human being, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'm curious as to, uh, man, you know, that, that, that book is like, I'm really curious about that book. Like I, I've never read that book or seen it. Which one? Uh, the one that, uh, the one that you just shared, the book of the week. Oh, the incomplete education. Yeah, yeah. the incomplete well, education. Somebody mentioned it's really thick and I do not sat down and read this thing in one setting. Like I said, this is something that I just have on the shelf. And so when a topic comes up and I'm like, you know, I don't really know about that. I'll go in here and look it up. Like for instance, uh, right here, I have it marked. I'm in the religion section and uh, Zoroastrianism. So I must have come across something that mentioned that and was like, oh, I should check that out, right? Uh, so I don't really read it cover to cover, but I go back and just look at the things, right? Like, you know, there's a section on film. Uh, if you want to know what that's about, there's economics, an important topic for entrepreneurs to know about. So, yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Nick. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, I don't feel like you did. You guys, ha um, is anybody is anybody currently reading a, a book? On, on personal development. Maybe you guys can share some of the titles that you guys are, are reading right now, just so I could, you know, I know we're always in the, we're always in the market for growing our, our knowledge. So curious as to what books you guys are reading. We've never really asked that, right? Like what books are all the sharks reading? <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, one Dork. thing while they're putting that in, why don't we do our member of the week? Cause we always wait till the very end to do that. Okay, let's do our member of the week. Let's do it. Let's do our. Uh... We... Our member of the week. Uh, where is this? Let me turn this off. Let me find it here. I got to pull it up. Uh, I don't even know who our member of the week is. Oh, a new member of the week. This is Ooh. awesome. So every week we celebrate a member of the week. It's a person who's in the Facebook group, answering questions, sharing information, just being an all around good uh, guide of our community and uh, high participation. We like to celebrate them, give them some special offline sharks uh, stuff, merchandise, whatever we, you know, whatever we decide to do, something always fun. And uh, our member of the week this week, come on, I gotta get to my share screen thing here, sorry. Our member of the week this week goes to Terrence Ballinger. Hey, Terrence. Congratulations, man. So Terrence is the member of the week. If you guys can uh, blow up this thread with congratulations to Terrence, somebody from our team will reach out to him and uh, we'll get him some special stuff. So awesome. Yeah, congrats, Terrence. Tag Terrence, you guys. Give him a big congratulations. He's either at A, Disney in that picture. He's at Disney or he's in the UK. Jacqueline, is he in the UK somewhere? Is he in London? <laughs> the architecture. See, if only, Tom, check your book. 
What kind of architecture would that be? <laughs> uh, that looks to be Victorian to me. Victorian. There we go. Victorian. But I don't know that for sure. I'm just guessing. <laughs> See, that's the book. That's the that's the book and the knowledge at work right there. Hoorah, Terrence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Way to go, Terrence. Congratulations. Uh, somebody from our team will reach out to you to get you set up with your special shark prize. And uh, I was just looking at some of the comments that people were putting in about the books, right? Uh, let's see. Dorn is reading Libertarian Talking Points, A to Z. That's good. Uh, let's see. Reading, let's see, You're a Badass. So Holly's reading You're a Badass by Jen Sincero. Uh, John Maxwell's book, Great Leaders Ask Great Questions. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, now so somebody, everybody's congratulating. Somebody said that they're reading a, uh, a book called hard knock life or something like that. <laughs> book yeah. about hard knocks life. Frank Zunga says he just started reading Bill Bryson's book, a short history of nearly everything. That'd be an, that's would be an interesting book. I read, um, we actually featured it as one of the books of the weeks a while back was, uh, by Will and Ariel Durant. And it's called uh, a history. What is it called? Oh, the lessons of history. I will an Ariel Durant. That was a good one. Dorn says he's reading four books. I do that too, Dorn. I read a bunch of different books. I've been like another book. I've kind of been reading along the way is this uh, thinking fast and thinking slow, but it's a thick book. Thinking fast and thinking slow, huh? Yeah. Well, that's a good title. Seven ways to make your phone ring and get more clients in 30 days or less. Oh, by me. I don't know who me is, but that's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, lots of uh, lots of great stuff in here. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's good to, you know, again, like we said, I think it's good to read a variety of topics, right? Not just, not just business books. I also like to uh, read good fiction books, right? And, uh, I've been reading one by um, a really old uh, crime novel. It's it's uh, by Raymond Chandler. And what is the name of it? Why is the name of it escaping me? And I got to look. Let's see. Oh, The Big Sleep. I think I'm reading The Big Sleep or The Long Goodbye. I can't remember which one it is. <laughs> It's so it's funny bad. that you're you, ever since I um like I, I like, you know, books. I like actually having having a book. Curious too. again, for, for all of you sharks tuning in with us. For those of you that have tried a Kindle, do you prefer Kindle or actually having a physical book? Like, what's your choice? Like, I know it's it's kind of a lot like if you don't like own a house and you rent, it is tough to have a library or a collection of books. It sucks. Like I remember before, you know, I bought my house, I was like packing all my books and shit and it was just a total pain in the ass. But you should I have mean, seen all the ones I sold before I moved here. Right. Before we moved to Hawaii in 2010. Like it was a lot. I've had to slowly rebuild. Rebuild. Exactly. <laughs> so what's, what's your guys take? What do you like? Do you like Kindle? Do you like audio? Do you like actually having a physical book? Both Tom and I are more, physical book kind of guys, but I, I have recently picked up a Kindle a couple months ago and here's what I like the Kindle for. Um, late at night when I'm trying to read cause I'm tired or whatever and I can't go to bed cause I've been staring at a computer screen all day. Um, I can read without like having a light on, like waking up oh, yeah. my wife. You know what I mean? Did so that's paper very, white? huh? Did paper you get the white. paper white? That's the yep. best one. Yeah. I love paper white. I was a little worried that it'd feel too like iPad y, <laughs> I guess you could say. But yeah, with the paper white, it really does kind of feel like a book that's backlit. Um, but what I was gonna say is like ever since I picked up the Kindle, which I think it's cool, like I like it. Sometimes I'll buy a book on Kindle and I'll be like, damn it, I want to have that in my collection though. You know, I want to have that in my on my bookshelf. And I'll just yeah, buy the book anyway, just to have it. Just to have it. I gotta yeah. have it. I don't know. <laughs> uh yeah. but one of the things I noticed is like, and I don't know if it says much about the book, but like when I buy books on Kindle, I always forget the name. I always forget the name of the book. Is that just me? I don't know. 
It's mm. not the same. Like when you have a book and it's sitting on your nightstand, you always see the title, right? Like you're always opening it up. And on the Kindle, you just, you know, hit the button and like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never remember what's on the Kindle. The other day I was looking there and I was like, oh, I didn't even know I had this book. <laughs> like, oh, this book is there. Like, oh, yeah, I'm a physical book. Well, you know, from I have a lot of um, really old magic books. So like when I got into magic when I was younger, uh, the the people that I learned from in magic, they were really big on uh, being well read, right? Being well read in the topic and understanding what came before you and where, you know, where stuff came from. And so I've always been a reader because of the magic stuff and uh, collecting like the old books um, and all that kind of stuff. So I have some books over here on the magic bookshelf that are like super duper old. The magic like bookshelf. Do you like guys hear that? Style. That marketing term right there? Yep. The man. Well, it is. It's all magic books. There's no marketing books on it. It's just all it's all magic stuff. And for those of you that that know our uh our uh, director of operations, Cameron, Cameron wrote, and he's probably on the call. He's he also a he's also a very big um well, number one, he probably has a magic bookshelf as well because he also did <laughs> pra does practice magic. Um, but also book collector but also you and cameron have have your your mentor that you talk about the renaissance man also cameron oh, yeah. knows as well right yeah that's how cameron and i met yeah yeah which so. is which is uh i think there's you know definitely something to be said for that you know and and i also i also think that when people become you know passionate about something and have some success in a field because people always talk about like well, how do I find a mentor? You know, like, because people talk about how awesome getting a mentor can be, how, how beneficial it can be for you. Uh, but then people are always like, well, how do I, how do I get a mentor? And you know, the first thing that people think about are like, well, how do I get Elon Musk as my mentor? <laughs> you know, they always want to get like the main guy, right? You want Jeff Bezos to be your mentor. Here's how you get him. Just shoot him a text message, shoot him an email. He'll respond. No, that's, I mean, that's not really how it works, but, um, I think, when you think about getting a mentor, it oftentimes seems a little more of a, of a process than it really can be, you know, because a lot of people, first of all, there are a lot of people that are successful in, in doing a lot of things that uh, are willing to share information with other people just because they have a level of success and they're passionate about what they're doing, right? Like if you're, if your thing is working on, you know, classic cars and you love, you know, restoring cars and doing, you know, building these things like, and somebody just shows up one day and is like very interested in that one thing that you love so much. And you have all this information about like, you're going to, you're going to tell them a little bit about that. Right. And it's going to excite you to be able to share that knowledge and see their face light up from that knowledge that also excites you. So I know that a lot of people think about like, well, it's so difficult to find a mentor and there, there's nobody out there that would really help me, but really there are a ton of people out there probably a little more difficult with COVID right now if you're trying to meet someone on a face-to-face -face thing, but they're, they're definitely out there, you know, and, and uh, you'd be surprised. I, I was surprised when I found that more people are willing to share information with, with me and you just based off of having common interests. Well, and I think you hit the nail on the head there when you, when you say, well, how do you find a mentor? Like Brian Kurtz has a great thing about how your mentors choose you. Right. And I, and I think kind of what he means there is exactly what you're talking about, Nick. And that is um, when you like, if you want to find mentors like that, you one, you need to be interested in other people and you need to seek out people that are doing things that you find interesting or doing the things that you want to do. And then when you meet that person, like you have to genuinely be interested in how they did it and like, and show that like, you have to be a good student, right? You have to be a good student because nobody likes right. to share stuff with somebody that's a jackass, right? And I used mm -hmm. to see this all the time with magicians is people would come over to meet the guy that we're talking about. His name is uh, Ron. People would come to meet Ron because Ron is kind of like an, a legend in the magic community. And so people would come to meet him and they would never ask him to do a trick. All they would do is show him tricks. Hmm. I'm like, what? Like, the, here's a guy that 
probably knows everything you ever want to know and all this stuff. And they never ask him to do anything. They just want, Oh, watch my thing. Watch what I can do. Watch my trick. Watch this. What like, and never even ask him like, well, what, what can you do for me? And I used to see that. And I would always think like, what a waste, like, and that person, like Ron's not the kind of person that's like, well, let me do something for you. Like he waits yeah. for somebody to ask. And so people right. would come and spend an entire day with them and never get any of the knowledge or the information because they were just interested in themselves. They weren't interest, really interested in him. Right. Right. And uh, I think, man, what of the opportunities those people missed and they didn't even, they don't even know it. They didn't even realize that they missed the opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what? Right? That's, that's such a, that is such a good point, Tom. And, and I think probably like the key takeaway from this live today is, is, is just being like, if you, if you want to pick up a mentor or learn from somebody like you, you got to be teachable, you know, and one, one of the, the main ways to be teachable is to, is to be curious and, and ask questions. And it is, it is I, like, I've actually been in that situation before where like people have been like, Hey, you know, I know what you're doing. I see what you're doing. How do you do it? And then they just like talk all about themselves and all their things. And I'm like, <laughs> like it totally, it makes me want to just be like, okay, well, congratulations. Keep doing what you're doing. Sounds Not like you got it all that. figured out. Like, but it's <laughs> yeah. like, I, I, it is, it, it is really frustrating to be on the other end of that. Right. Like if you want to know what I'm doing, shouldn't you be asking a question about it rather than just like talking about yourself? So ask questions, you guys, that is, that is the note, right? Like ask questions. If you, if you're genuinely curious about something, scrap all the shit that you know and ask questions. Like Put what you know on the side, on the shelf, be teachable, ask questions. I think it's, it's probably, it's probably the best way to get a mentor. Really? It really is. Just ask questions. It, I mean, I think it is. I'm trying to pull this up because I want to, I just realized we're getting close. Andy says, that. have you heard uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And, and yes. it, it seems like the mentor, like I've, so I've had a couple now myself and it seems like they kind of show up right at the right at the, the pivotal moment right right at the pivotal moment so i would i would subscribe to that uh david says tom is a fantastic magician he regularly <laughs> makes money disappear i would 100 percent agree with that david <laughs> <laughs> that i do that i do hey i do want to talk talk about because you know along with like i think there's another aspect to this too like mentors great like finding people you can follow which by the way is easier than ever today, right? Because one, you can just join groups like offline sharks where there's a ton of people in there with the same interest doing the things you want to do groups like that on all kinds of topics, right? Two, there's a plethora of people that you can just hire to be mentors for you. If you have no other way to do it, right? Like you can do that as well. Um, but I think another thing that goes along with that is also like building up a kind of, um, war chest of things that you can use. And this is more for your business, like a war chest of things you can use in your business. So, and this kind of ties into what we were going to talk about. Uh, we talked about the instant agency thing, right? And I did, I just kind of wanted to tie this together because another tactic that Nick and I have used for years and years and years is not just trying to find other people that are doing what we're doing and modeling success and all that stuff, but we're always on the lookout for um, done for you materials, things that we can bring into our agency. Maybe that we're not, we don't even need them right then and there, but like it's around a service we offer or something we do. And then we have that like in our war chest, right? It's almost like a copywriters have what they call a swipe file where they collect ads so they can get ideas. Well, we do that same kind of stuff with done for you marketing materials. And there's a lot of times that it's really saved our butts when you know, I've been talking to a client and they, you know, maybe it's a client I've never worked with before. And they're like, Hey, can you help me? Or a subject I've never worked with before. And I'm like, yeah. And the reason I'm able to say yes is because I have some type of material that's already kind of pre-done that I can use as a jumping off point to help them. Right. And so we create a lot of that stuff for our agency. And one of the things we decided to start doing was giving that stuff to you guys, like giving you the opportunity to get those things as well. So this week we've been sending out emails about our home services done for you marketing bundle, right? So this is a collection of stuff that we, you know, we have content writers on our agency team and graphic designers that we have create this stuff for us to use in our agency. And we're 
now you can get the same things, right? So these are, this is not like, it's not typical PLR. Like we didn't get this from someplace else. Like we created this internally. We use it in our agency and we just wanted to give you the opportunity to be able to use it as well. So uh, if you want to check out this done for you pack, you can head over to offlinesharks.com forward slash DFY hyphen bundle. You'll see it scrolling by the bottom there. And uh, let me just show you guys this. So here. You know, I can't, I can't even tell you guys how many times like I've needed stuff in a pinch and had to like hit Tom up because he had, he kept such a good swipe library of different things. And so, you know, so many times I've needed content, right? I've needed a way to position. I've needed something to send to a prospect to kind of position myself as more credible. Or I'd be like, Hey, I have this new, uh, I have a new, um, you know, water damage client that just came in a prospect. I know you've worked with water damage people before. Like, do you have anything I can use any information that I can use to kind of set myself up? And Tom had, I mean, when we started working together, he had this huge Dropbox folder of, you know, just like his bookshelf, right? Just like his bookshelf. It's the same thing. It's the same principle, same. And, and, you know, I, I do the same, you know, I, I keep that stuff. And sometimes it's not about like, um, it, it's more about like having quality stuff on hand so that when you need it, you got it and you can just kind of pull it out. So that's where all of our stuff comes from too, is it's based off of like what we've needed. We kind of just give to you guys. Yeah. And we work with a lot of home service clients. So we create a lot of this content for them and we just decided to bundle it up. And so if you guys like this kind of stuff, we might do more of these. Um, I think this is the second one we've done. We did one on restaurants uh, before because we were doing a lot of work with restaurants. But I mean, you get quite a bit of stuff in here. There's lead magnets, there's blog posts, there's social media posts and graphics, there's emails, autoresponders, all that stuff. You can, if you go to that offline sharks.com forward slash DFY hyphen bundle, uh, you can see everything that's in here and uh, see what you get, all that stuff. But you can see this stuff looks really great, super professional looking again, because this is what we're using in our own agency for our own clients. This You're not going to find this anywhere else. You're not going to stumble across this material on some other site or anything like that. So uh, you can see all of this stuff and uh, it's on a special price right now. So I think we got another day left on it. So if you just head over to offlinesharks.com forward slash DFY hyphen bundle, uh, you can check it out, see if it's a fit for you. You know, I would encourage you, even if you're not working with home services people right now, that is a niche and a business type that's really good to work with. So even if you're not working with them now, you might want to think about picking this up and just having it in your war chest. So if you ever come across someone or eventually you do start working with them, you'll have a, a little, uh, package of material that you can pull from and use to help them out. So, yeah, I can't, I mean, you guys, we got a number of home service clients under retainer and a number of them that, that even if they're not under retainer, we've done like one time services for them and, uh, they're great clients. They really are really, really good clients. So, uh, Wayne says, is there an Alliance member discount? And actually Wayne, there's a, there's an offline sharks member discount. And that's, that's what you have on that page. Um, if you take, if you, if you consider, you know, our team, right? Like we've got professional content writers and graphic designers that are, you know, they provide the quality of work that we are looking for and we have to pay them to create this stuff for us. You know, I mean, hundreds of dollars per item. So you guys aren't paying anywhere near that. You get that for a fraction as an offline shark. So that's the discount you see on that page. I think it's like $500 off of what we paid for it or something like that. Yeah, they're, I mean, it's not inexpensive to have these things made. And if you if you do agency growth machine, if you're an AGM member, I mean, this stuff is really great. Like, as you guys know, we have an Oahu Home Services AGM site. And this, this type of content is what we can post on that site, what we can use on that site, what we can use for the clients we get from that site. So if you have an AGM site and you're bringing home service people onto your AGM site or you want to, this material be is really kind of like, I think a no brainer for you because it can attract those type of people and help you land them as clients and, uh, and transition them into paying clients. Right. So really, really great. You know, Tom, you, you mentioned something really important there that I want to bring to everybody's attention too, but, and that, yes, we have a, we have a home services AGM website and, you know, we 
like I got to be honest with you guys. Like we set that thing up and we, you know, put some businesses in there. Those of you that are familiar, actually, let me, let me just share the screen real quick, Tom. I know we're kind of yeah, yeah, okay yeah. If we stay a couple minutes late real quick, just because I want to, this is super valuable. You guys are going to love this. Yeah. I have a little bit of time. I think I'm supposed to talk at that Podfest thing at in an hour. So we're good. We're good for now. Gotcha. Okay. So you guys, this is our Oahu Home Services uh, AGM website, right? This is another island right here you guys are looking at with all these pins. So Tom and I live on this island over here, and this is another one. But we wanted to prospect on this island because there's uh, over a million people there. It's like the most densely populated island here in Hawaii. This is where uh, Waikiki is and all those places people are very familiar with when they think about Hawaii. And so home services is also a, a booming industry there as well. Now, what I want to point out to you guys is if I told you, let me pull up the keyword real quick. Um, let's see. If I told you that like somebody was looking for home services on Oahu and they typed in home services on Oahu and we showed up number one, we haven't done any SEO to this site other than publish content exactly like we're telling you that we've we've uh, posted, right? Like, look at this content right here. If you go to our blog section and you see this type of um, content that we've written around these topics, this is all we have done is publish this type of content, which you can do. Like, if you take this bundle, we're giving you the, the rights and the access to do that. And... I know a lot of people say, well, what about duplicate content? Like, don't worry about that. <laughs> don't worry about putting this. Like, we're we're allowing all of you. We can all of you can do this. You have our permission because you're buying it. And Google's not going to penalize you for putting this blog post on here. And it's not going to penalize Gibson and and Gabriel and uh, you know, Jacqueline for taking this content and putting it on their site and putting like, you know, their location you know, uh, wherever they are in the title and ranking for that search term. And the reason I bring this up, you guys, is because, you know, it's easy to do. And just one of the use cases, just one of the use cases that you can use this content for. And it's, it's super helpful. And I don't think people really, people really understand that that's kind of how easy it can be if you have something like this. Yeah, awesome. Brad said he's having the same success with his AGM site. So way to go, Brad. Yeah, uh, w William says, so we can change the content. Yeah, the, William, the, the content is yours. You can use it just as a base and kind of, you know, pretty it up or make it fit your messaging or your voice if you want. Or you can just copy and paste it and use it as is. It's not specific to Hawaii. It's specific to the different services that you can, you can, and we have found uh, to be profitable that you can go after. Yeah, should we? Hey, are we going to give away some cash app money on the actual live, or are we just doing it after? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's let's do it right now because we. I want to give away two. So I know that Shashan already gave me. Well, what do you guys think? Should we do the cash app money? <laughs> Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. I got to sneak it in again. Ha <laughs> uh, ha That's great. <laughs> so, so uh, at the beginning of the call, if you guys weren't here, we had a special uh, opportunity to win some cash app money. And the way to do it was to post on our shout outs uh, post. These are all the, the members of Offline Sharks that we're highlighting for what they've been doing in our group. So you can see that you know, 46 people made comments there, which is kind of sad because there's over 113 people on the call with us right now. So every single person should go there, like that post, comment on it. And yeah, you know, and we only have like 21 likes on the stream know, itself. What's up with that? We only have 21 likes on our stream. What's up with that? Come um, on, people, you're better than this. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I have, uh, I, 
I, uh, we were going to pick somebody at random that made comment on that post and give them some cash app money. And Shashan already messaged me. So let me pull that up in Slack. The winners are Norma Ann Hutchison and Suzette Desjardins. Norma so, Ann. Norma and Ann. Suzette. Suzette. So congratulations, you guys. Thank you for, for doing that and helping us to congratulate those those uh, members with their shout outs. And, you know, next week, just come to the live and join in on that and you could win some cash app money. But I'm going to do one more giveaway right now before we jump off. Is that the last thing we need to do, Tom? Yeah, that's the last thing. OK. All right. So here's how it works. I'm going to ask you guys a question. First one to get the answer correct is going to get some cash app money. So let me pull up that question here. You guys ready? <laughs> so, name one major service offered by Nick Ponty Marketing and Hands Off Media. Oh, one major service. We have five. Actually, we have six. Hands Off Media brings one to the table that we don't normally do. Somebody said Dr. Seuss. Holly Barnes. SEO. Congratulations. We're going to send you some cash app money. Hey, and, and by the way, everybody that went to my post earlier that helped me to kind of figure out where my agency was landing for some of those search terms, I really appreciate it. I know there's a, a lot of people that helped out with that. Um, Google algorithm, right? Changing. It's always changing. We got to always keep innovating. And, you know, we see some ebbs and flows in our rankings for our sites and our client sites. So it's good to know where people are searching from. So thank you all for helping out with that. And I actually, I gave away like, I think a hundred dollars in cash app money just yesterday, just by going to that post and letting me know what you guys saw. So, um, lots of yeah, opportunities I, just to hang out with us, get information and win some cash app money. Yeah. You gave away so much money. I told the girls, I was like, look, we're only going to be able to send one of you to college now. So <laughs> I'm going to need you guys to, uh, submit your essays by the end of the week. And, uh, yeah, so. They were a little bummed. Do, give away, do we do too much giveaways <laughs> on our on our events or lives? Honestly, oh, you guys, do we? Do we do do we do too many? Not enough. What do you think? I see your cash tag there, Holly. We uh we will grab it and send you that later today. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, man, another fantastic Aloha Friday marketing jam session, and. Uh, Hey, if you guys don't have anything to do in about an hour, uh, I'm actually speaking at PodFest Global. And uh, we put a post in the Facebook group. You'll just have to search for it. I don't know exactly where it's at, but we put a post in there that had a code that will get you the $49 ticket for free. So if you're interested to come and hear me talk at PodFest Global, you can go there, put in the code, and then you use, um, it's on the Whova. I'd never heard of this, Nick. W-H-O-V-A, Whova app is where they run all of the uh, talks and stuff. So uh, if you don't have anything to do, you want to come hear that, you can come come for that for free. Uh, I'm going to be going on at 5 p.m. Eastern, so just about 50 minutes from now. And uh, yeah, other than that, we'll see you guys here next uh, next Friday. Go check out the Done For You Bundle. It's only like a day left on that. It's got a lot of great content in it. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to us at uh, offlinesharks.com forward slash support. And uh, we'll be seeing you guys in the Facebook group. Aloha, everybody. See you, everybody. Are you that was the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to the Sharks Live Show, your weekly local marketing jam session. Every week, packed full of local marketing strategy, tactics, tips, and fun, fun, fun. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this stream. You can stay up to date throughout the week with Nick's YouTube videos at nickponte.com slash YouTube and Tom's podcast at tomgaddis.com. We'll be back here next Friday for another Sharks Live Show. Until then, aloha.